In case of the vision, we will try to find a visual analogy to describe what the vision actually represents. While a rectangle was a very useful analogy for multiplication, we will use a pair of similar triangles to represent division. The relationship f of x over 1 equal to g of x over r of x can be represented geometrically with two similar triangles. One side of the resulting triangle has to be equal to one unit. The triangles that we will use will have a right angle so that the effect of growth of the numerator and denominator can be easily understood. We can make this relationship more obvious by placing the smaller result triangle inside the larger triangle representing the division. Let us observe what kind of an effect does a change in g of x have on the change in f of x. If we carefully analyze the diagram, it will be noticed that if only the g of x changes, then f of x will change proportionally. The relationship of ratios for slightly larger triangles is as follows. f of x plus delta f of x over 1 is equal to g of x plus delta g of x over r of x, subtracting out the ratios of smaller triangles on each side, and we get f of x plus delta f of x over 1 minus f of x over 1 is equal to g of x plus delta g of x over r of x minus g of x over r of x, which simplifies down to delta f of x over 1 is equal to delta g of x over r of x, or simply delta f of x is equal to delta g of x over r of x. Now, let's take a look at how a change in r of x has a much different effect on the change in f of x. As r of x becomes larger, the value of f of x becomes smaller. This makes sense because what is really taking place is that we are dividing g of x by a greater number. What stands to be determined is the exact amount by which f of x becomes smaller as r of x increases. Notice that due to the similarities of triangles, we can say that negative delta f of x over delta r of x over r of x is equal to f of x over 1. But what is the f of x in this case anyways? We know that the old f of x is equal to g of x over r of x. And so the new f of x is equal to g of x plus delta g of x over r of x plus delta r of x. In our case, the function g of x didn't change, and so delta g of x is equal to 0. And so we can say that the new f of x is actually equal to g of x over r of x plus delta r of x. Now that we defined the new f of x in terms of g and r functions, we can say that negative delta f of x over delta r of x over r of x is equal to g of x over r of x plus delta r of x. And therefore, we can say that the delta f of x is equal to negative g of x times delta r of x over r of x times, in parentheses, r of x plus delta r of x. But if both g of x and r of x vary, then delta g of x and delta r of x are no longer going to be zeros. This would mean that the delta f of x from the last equation would end up being delta f of x is equal to negative g of x times delta r of x minus delta g of x times delta r of x, all over r of x times, in parentheses, r of x plus delta r of x. And if we include the effects of the change in g of x from before, we get delta f of x equal to delta g of x 
over r of x minus in parentheses g of x times delta r of x plus delta g of x times delta r of x all over r of x times in parentheses r of x plus delta r of x after making sure that both denominators are equal and then adding the numerators together uh, we notice that the equation simplifies to the delta f of x being delta g of x times r of x minus g of x times delta r of x all over r of x times in parentheses r of x plus delta r of x and since we're interested in the change of f of x as it relates to the change in x we divide both sides of the equation by the delta x and we get a result that describes the relationship in terms of derivatives that is to say that the f prime x is equal to g prime x times r of x minus g of x times r prime x over r of x squared plus r of x times delta r of x part of the denominator delta r of x times r of x can be multiplied and divided by delta x and then this would be equal to delta r of x over delta x times r of x times delta x which can alternatively be written as r prime x times r of x times delta x and that becomes zero if delta x is infinitesimally small and for this reason it disappears from the equation as well finally it can be concluded that if f of x is equal to g of x over r of x then f prime x is equal to g prime x times r of x minus g of x times r prime x all of that over r of x squared